Hello everyone and welcome to Kerbal Space Program yet again. Today we are going to the moon! Indeed! Yes, because it's about time we did. So this is our rocket here. And you might notice that it's got quite a lot of fuel because we're going to need quite a lot of fuel. So don't know how this is going to go. We're going to wait and see and just hope for the best. So yeah. Isn't it pretty? You'll notice there's a lot of struts because we're going to need all of them. Now, clear and proceed. So here we go, and we're off! Now you'll notice here I'm using something called asparagus staging. I haven't used this before, but it's um, it's very useful. Basically we're going to drop two fuel tanks before the rest. They're going to empty out first and then we're going to drop them off. So you'll see at the side we're draining more fuel out of two tanks than the other tanks. So yeah, it'll make sense in a minute. And wait for it. Wait for it. Any moment. And drop them. There we go. So the idea behind this is, it might be not, it's probably not very realistic, but um, in KSP this works, and it's actually quite common, because it means that every time we drop tanks we're losing weight, and we're still getting as much fuel as, as possible, so it's the most efficient way to do it. Now, so we're about 10,000, we're going to start our turn here. Turn over to about the first point, and steady there. And now we're about to drain out of these two tanks, so we're going to empty these soon. Or drop them. And... Away they go. Okay then, so now we're down to just one tank. And you can see we're up at about 35,000 at the height of our launch, if you like. And we're going to keep turning. I'm going to take this very shallow here, but it should still work out. Now, so we're just watching this here. You see it says 63,000 now. We want to get this to about 100,000. Then we can stop. Because that's where we're going to try and orbit. So, 79, 80, 81, 82, 85. You see it gets faster as you go. So, and stop. There we go. And now, so now the top of our launch, if you like, is 100,000. So now, if we put a maneuver there, and if we accelerate there, you'll see that now we make more of an orbit. And we want to get it fairly even. You'll actually notice that those two points switch there, the apoapsis and the periapsis. And when they switch, that's around the point where they're the same values. So, yeah. When you see them flip, you can stop. So that's roughly about the same, I think. Might just adjust it a little bit. It's 104, 103. Yeah, that's close enough. Alright. Now we're just going to turn our RCS on, and we're going to turn to the blue marker, because that's where we need to be aiming for. And just turn around, lock ourselves there. You'll see it's very hard to actually turn at the moment because we're so big. But I don't want to dump that fuel tank yet because I need it. And we start our burn, and the problem is, you'll notice that we actually run out of fuel in that tank before we finish our burn, which is going to throw off our maneuver. So first off, I'm going to get rid of that. And that's grand, but now we didn't really make that maneuver properly. So you see our orbit's a bit shy. So what I'm actually going to do is just keep burning here, but with a smaller engine. I didn't want to do this, but it'll do. Now, that's close enough. Now, there we go. As I said, once you see those turning around, that's pretty much when they're the same. So now, we're just about there. Yeah. Ideally, you'd want to get those to spin around to about 90 degrees, but um, but it's close enough. Anywho, now we're in a stable, what they call a parking orbit. Um, so basically it's around 100,000 on either side. Now we're going to the moon! And so there's a couple of different ways of doing this. The most efficient way is not what I'm going to do. Actually, the most efficient way is like burn basically straight for, for it from the ground. But um, basically, roughly what you do is you set it up so it's about 90 degrees from you, as it is now. And then you just kind of burn at your lowest point. And hopefully getting a counter. And as you can see up there, we're getting an encounter. So I'm just going to get the... Going to see what I can do to get an encounter without using too much fuel. Yeah, there we go. That's the minimum we have to do to get an encounter of the moon. And now... You'll actually notice here I'm burning before I get to the maneuver point. And the reason for that is you see that the if you look down the bottom where it says what the estimated burn time is, it's about two minutes that I have to burn for. 
Now the maneuver system basically the maneuver system says that if you burn, you know, all of your fuel at this exact point that it'll get you there. The problem is that's not possible. So what you do is you burn half before you get there and half after it. So if your burn is two minutes, then one minute before you reach that point you burn. So yeah. You get the hang of it after a while. Now. So that's roughly the same. So it looks like that's gonna get us to the moon. Yeah, that's good enough. It's going to leave us actually quite far away from it, but once we get there we can fix that. Just delete that maneuver. And we're going to fast forward. Oh, and of course, I'm actually going to set the moon as a target. I don't really have to do that, but it's handy later on. It just shows you where it is and everything. Now, let's fast forward. And we get this nice view of us soaring away from the planet. And even the sun sets behind us. It's so pretty. And we're heading to the moon! Now of course this would take a while, but if we fast forward it won't go too... It won't take too long. Although I might skip the video here just to speed things up. Just a tad. Now we're just about there. And you'll see, once we get there, we're gonna kinda loop around it. We're not gonna actually do that, but once we get to that point where the blue line ends, you'll see the view changes and it makes it easier to see what's going on. Now, any moment now. And... Just about. There we go. So you see the second we actually reach that encounter, the view changes and it shows us what we're actually gonna do. Now this might look weird, you might think, wait, we're going backwards? But we're actually not, it's because the moon is moving forwards, so that's what we're going to do relative to the moon. So yeah. Now currently, as you can see, we would hit the moon. We would actually hit it dead on, which is not really what we want. There are several different ways you could do this. Um, you could just go, you know, go in hot, go straight for the moon, but you'd have to spend a lot of fuel actually slowing yourself down. Or you can loop around the moon. First off, I'm just going to turn myself around a bit. Now you see, currently we're aiming forward along our path, if you like. So if we go forward now, which we're doing now, you'll see the line actually expands. Because if we accelerate along that line, it'll actually swing us around the moon instead of crashing into it. Because we're speeding up our orbit speed. So rather than descending, we'd go above it. Now you might wonder why I'm doing this. It looks like I'm going away from the moon. But actually, if I do it this way, what I'm going to do is swing that out so I can actually get above the moon. And then at that lowest point there, you see we just got a periapsis down there. So if I now... I'm going to get this to about 10,000 first. But once I swing this out, I go to the periapsis and I accelerate there. And then that'll turn us into, you know, an orbit. Yeah, roughly. Thereabouts. Now, so just add a maneuver there. And... At that point, see, so we go to that point, and now we slow down. And see, now that turns us in, brings it into an orbit. But if we hadn't sped up first, we would have crashed into the moon, which would not have been nice. Now, I'm going to go for a very loose orbit here. And um, there are, again, several ways to do this. I could just um, shrink this orbit right down. But I'm going to do it this way, just to be safer. So that's fine. So now we just need to speed up until we get there. Although we'll turn around first. Because keep in mind, this time we're burning backwards. Because again, if you want to go... If you want to increase your orbit, you go... You speed up along the orbit, but if you want to go... You know, if you want to decrease it, you slow down. So you burn backwards. Because that's the only way you can slow down. So now we're doing our burn. And you see we're bringing that in now. The blue line is what our actual path is. So we want to get that close enough to the orbit. And stop. There we go. So now we have an orbit. It's a bit weird, but it's an orbit. Just gonna kill that maneuver there. And so this is where we currently stand. So now what I do is I basically wait until I get to the lowest point again. I've actually swung around the whole way just to be sure. And now I'm gonna turn this into a smaller orbit.
And there we go. Now you probably wonder why I didn't actually wait and go to the... Because if I had gone to the very top point of the orbit, and then, you know, slowed down a bit, we would have hit the planet, but we would have done it going very, very fast. If we do it this way, we go a lot slower. Because this way we have a very shallow parking orbit, and then we just slow down a bit and we just, you know, reach the surface. So first off, gonna spin around. Get to our blue marker. Lock ourselves in place there. And now. Now actually one thing you might notice is, currently the estimated burn time is NA, which doesn't tell us anything. The reason for that is sometimes it can't judge it, so if that ever happens all you have to do is burn for like a second, and it'll judge it. See, now it says 5 seconds. So if we have a 5 second burn, we need to burn... We technically need to burn at about 2 seconds to the marker, but of course... Ooh! <laughs> of course, as I'm saying that... I reach it. But yeah, as I said, the way it works is that you want to do half of your burn before that point and the other half afterwards. But of course, keep in mind it takes you about 2 seconds to power up your engine, so... If your burn is 5 seconds, you'd want to actually burn at about 5 seconds too. And then keep going for about 2 seconds afterwards. Now, so we have an orbit. Gonna kill that maneuver. And again, this is a parking orbit. It's one very slow, stable orbit around the planet. And so now, all we have to do is decide where we want to land and basically slow down at one of these points. So I'm going to go to my apoapsis, and I'm going to set a maneuver, and slow down just a tiny little bit. And you can see that puts us down on the moon. And it's time for more spinning, because <laughs> we do like spinning. You actually spend most of your time in this game doing this, either spinning backwards or forwards. Now we'll go to our marker. You don't actually have to use the maneuver system, but it makes a lot of sense. Now, so we do a quick burn here. It's literally like a one second burn here. And with that, as you can see, we're now touched down on the moon. So just delete that maneuver again. And we're good to go! Now, so we've sped up. We're almost there. But you'll see the current surface speed is about 500 meters per second. We obviously can't hit the moon going that speed or we would explode. Horribly. <laughs> so we have to spend a lot of fuel slowing down. So we're just gonna, you know, trim off most of the speed here. Now down to about 250, still slowing down. I'm also tilting as well, you'll notice, because that green marker is showing us, you know, our path down to the surface. Ideally, we want to accelerate along that path. Because if we're burning sideways, that's killing our horizontal movement. But we also, also have to slow down our vertical speed, so... If you kind of stay on that marker, it'll do both. Now, so we're going quite slowly now. Keep in mind though, every time you stop, you know, trusting, it's gonna basically speed up again very fast, so. It actually takes quite a lot of fuel to land, even on the moon. And the moon has really low gravity. On a planet, it's much worse. Now, so at this stage, we're pretty much going vertical, so we can just lock that in. And slow down very, very slowly. Now we've skipped forward a bit, because this takes quite a while. We have our landing legs down now, and we're hopefully going to land. And we have a nice view of Kerbin in the background. Skipped again, and you can see we now have a shadow, which means that we're very close to the surf surface. If you actually watch the altitude meter, you'll notice it says 2000 meters. You can't really rely on that when you're landing on a planet. You kind of have to go by eye. It only makes sense on Kerbin. Now. And her shadow disappears. That's a glitch. Ignore that. So we're just about there. Steady does it. Just inching down. 
We can if we speed up at all, we can actually go back up again, so we have to be careful. Just going very slowly. Anything below about, you know, three meters per second is perfect, so. Easy does it. We're actually sliding a bit here, which is bad, but it's too late to kind of fix it now. Gently. Gently. Down. See, we're going up again now. And... So close. <laughs> we're going up. And we're down. But no, we landed on a slope. And we're tilting. No! I tried to fix it with the RCS, but it's just not going to happen. And we're going to fall over. This may not seem like a big deal, but what this means is that we can't take off again. So yeah, we're pretty much stuck here now. <laughs> Our poor little guys are stranded on the moon. Until we come and rescue them. But now, just to zoom out and give some perspective. We're that tiny little dot there. So yeah, even the moon is actually pretty big. And you can see we actually have a decent amount of fuel left. If we were upright, we would actually have a good chance of getting home. Although in fairness, that fuel probably isn't enough to actually escape the moon. So yeah, we're stuck here. But while we're here, might as well send a guy to have a run around. So brave old Jebediah is going to have a run around. And of course, because this is the moon, if we have a little jump here, you'll see we go quite high. So we did it. We actually landed here. This is harder than you would think. <laughs> but um, yeah. As I said, as it stands, we're pretty stranded. So we're going to have to wait until we get another rocket up here, which can take these guys home. In the meantime, huddle up inside. And we're done. And as we zoom out and out and out, you just see how tiny that is compared to the size of the moon. And the moon is actually one of the smaller objects you can land on. If we keep going out, you'll see there's Kerbin back there. And if we keep going out, we see the other moon, and we see all the other planets. So as you can imagine, it takes quite a while to get there. <laughs> but we'll we'll do it. Sure, why not? Anyway, guys, this has been more Kerbal Space Program. And good day! <laughs>